started um, as a few people keep joining. Um, thank you for joining us, um, everyone that's, that's uh, watching this, um, everyone that's joining today. Um, thank you to our presenters. Um, we've got Andrew, give us a wave from Study Adelaide. Oh, he's gone, there he is. Uh, we've got Kat from University of South Australia, and we've got Vivek from the University of Adelaide and Sarah from Study Options as well. Um, so thanks again for joining us um, for our first South Australia event. Um, so those of you that know us, um, we are a, um, a free advice and application service for students who are looking to study in Australia and New Zealand. So um, we're based in the UK, but assist students throughout Europe um, and sometimes in, in other countries as well. So any questions that you might have, um, please feel free to contact us um, after the event. Um, if you've got any questions as we go along, I know some of you have already emailed those through, but otherwise, please feel free to use the chat box. Um, I know a number of you are looking, hopefully, to um, remain in South Australia after your courses, um, which, you know, it's a, it's a great option for you. Um, South Australia, I'm sure Andrew will, will, will touch upon this in his presentation. Um, if you are taking um, children with you, South Australia is one of the cheapest places to educate your child as an international student, um, which is great. Um, and I think that's probably enough for me. Uh, I'm going to pass, first of all, start pass over to Andrew from Study Adelaide, who I last saw when I was last in Australia um, in no, oh, sorry, December 2019. So I think this is the longest period that I've not been to Australia, and I'm hoping that I'll get back there soon. So, Andrew, over to you. Um, and yeah, like I said, anyone, any questions, please use the chat box. Thank you. No worries. Well, thank you so much for having me, um, Stefan, and, and thank you all for joining us today as well. Um, just pull up my screen, just make sure everyone can see that at the moment. Is that correct? We're all good? Yep, that's good. Yep. No worries. Um, well, thank you. Um, my name is Andy. I'm the Director of International Marketing with Study Adelaide. Um, we're actually a South Australian government agency and we're actually a partnership between uh, our uh, the South Australian government and also the education industry. So we're joined here today um, by Kat Delaflora from Uni University of South Australia and also Vivek Aurora as well from the University of Adelaide, two of our um, public universities um, here in South Australia. So um, aside from those two institutions, we have also over 50 education institutions, which includes everything from higher education providers, pathway providers, vocational schools, English language schools, probably not too relevant for the UK, um, that are all members of ours. And, and so we actively promote Adelaide collectively as a destination uh, for international students. Um, so that's probably our primary role. Our secondary role is, is very important. It's actually probably more important than the others, which is actually around student engagement. And what that means is making sure that when students come to visit Adelaide, um, that they get the most out of their experience um, and get the, get the most and hopefully learn to uh, stay in South Australia as well. We also advocate on behalf of the industry as well. So that's uh, educating people about the benefits of international education. Um, and in, that's not just you know, economic, but that's also about the social and cultural contribution that international students make uh, to the South Australian economy um, and broader community. So a little bit about Adelaide. Um, most people sort of, this is a, an aerial view of Adelaide itself for the famous uh, Adelaide Oval there. Um, Vivek, I believe you climbed that yesterday onto the roof, which would have been a little bit of fun, um, but it's actually the city designed for life. So I'm gonna take you through a little bit about the city. There's so much we'd love for you to explore face to face. Um, but again, please jump in uh, if you have any questions while I'm, I'm having a chat today. So where is it? Um, a very, very long way away from where you guys are at the moment. Um, it's the capital city of South Australia. Um, most people sort of have heard of Melbourne and it's roughly about a one hour flight from Melbourne. Um, if you want to drive from, from Melbourne to Adelaide, it's approximately nine hours. So um, Australia's a fairly large country, as you can imagine. Um, we have 70 kilometres of metropolitan beaches. Um, it's, uh, from, my, from my house, it's about 15 minutes away. Um, generally speaking, Glenelg Beach is about 20 minutes away from the cent central business district. And we like to call Adelaide the 20 minute city. It takes us 20 minutes to, to essentially walk, cycle or drive anywhere. So in terms of lifestyle, um, many of you may uh, spend a long time commuting or probably not so much in recent times, but 
um, in terms of that balance of lifestyle, we, we really value the ability to, to just um, get on with it and just do work or study and just come home straight away. So we don't spend a lot of time in commute. This is another version of uh, um, view of Adelaide. And, and what it really shows is just how close everything is together. The, the central business district is one square mile, um, literally just one square mile. And you can see that all of the main institutions in, in terms of universities are all located in the central business district. So it's all within walking distance of each other, which is fantastic. And when we sort of overlay some of the key attractions of Adelaide, again, you can see just how close it is to get to the places. So, there's places like the, the Botanic Gardens and Adelaide Central Market and the Riverbank Precinct and Shopping Precincts and, and the Glenelg Beach as well. So you can see being very compact, it's very, very easy to get around. So what's the weather like? Um, we definitely have a Mediterranean climate and I pulled these statistics up for you today just to give you a bit of a range. Australia is definitely a hot place and it hits 43.3 uh, degrees was the, the hottest temperature uh, in 2020, um, but the average temperature throughout the year is around 22 degrees. So um, just before we jumped on the call, we saying it was a little bit colder today than what it normally would be, um, but it's really manageable. It doesn't get, it doesn't really snow in Adelaide. It probably does once every 10 years, for example, and that's only in the hills. Um, and then a minimum temperature is around about 12 degrees uh, throughout the year. Excuse me, the, there's a bit of an error there around the deaths. It's not about deaths. I've just copied and pasted this slide from somewhere else. But as you can see, that Mediterranean climate means we spend a lot of time outdoors. We love going out and, and visiting places around South Australia and enjoying what the city has to offer. Um, and our climate is a big part of that, of, of enabling us to be able to do that. Uh, this is the, the next thing I guess is around what, what has been happening with COVID. Um, Australia is a bit of an island at the moment um, and we've been very fortunate, I guess, to, to not have um, uh, a severe, I guess, in, um, uptake or a severe number of cases in, in Australia. Um, in South Australia itself, um, these were the, the latest statistics from the South Australian government. We've currently got no new cases. We have 19 active cases and those are, are generally from hotel quarantine or, or returned Australians back into the country. So um, everybody who comes back into Australia is, is required to do two weeks of mandatory um, quarantine. And so those where those active cases um, go against that number. We've had a total of 740 cases in South Australia. Um, there's currently one patient in, hos in hospital and only one in ICU. I think they've um, been, been moved uh, from hospital into the ICU department. Um, fortunately, we've only had four deaths in South Australia and our vaccine um, rollout has, has begun in earnest as well. So we're probably um, a, a little bit of behind the UK in terms of rolling things out, um, but things are certainly underway at the moment. So what is life in Adelaide like? Um, the first thing I would talk about is really just how cost effective it is. Um, the benefits of, of South Australia or Adelaide in particular is that it's a capital city. So you get all the benefits of being in a capital city, modern facilities and infrastructure, which I'll talk to you a little bit later about um, without the big price tag, I guess. And so Adelaide has the lowest median rent in Australia out of all of the mainland capital cities, um, which makes it really, really fantastic. We also have the second lowest median house price in, in Australia. So sorry, these are Australian dollars as well. Um, their hot property prices in Australia are generally going up, but um, that still means we're, actually, we're still actually below the, the Australian average and also the second lowest um, price in terms of purchasing a house as well. So very, very good value. I thought as one of the, the ways to sort of educate you guys about, um, uh, the, the, about Adelaide in particular, one of the fantastic things about being a uh, former colony of the UK is that, um, that when they came across to South Australia, they got very, very homesick. And so they thought that, um, rather than coming up with new names for places, they're just going to borrow the ones that they were used to back in, uh, back in the UK. So just like Kensington in London, we actually have Kensington in Adelaide. So I thought we'd play a little bit of a bingo and um, Stefan was the one that introduced me to this. So. Um, I'm not too familiar with London house prices, but I've been led to believe they're fairly expensive. Um, a little three bedroom, these are all three bedroom places. Uh, Kensington in London, you'll set you back about six million pounds, I believe. Um, and this one in Kensington in Adelaide, we're gonna play bingo here. If anyone wants to play, does anyone wanna guess in the chat function? Too early in the day, got nothing. Speak up, forever hold your peace, nothing. 
No takers? All right, 856,000 pounds. What a saving, isn't that amazing? Pretty good, that's Kensington. And that's approximately 15 minutes from the center of the city. So really, really good buying there. I sound like a real estate agent all of a sudden. Um, Croydon in London is another place. Um, I believe the price on that was 430,000 uh, pounds. Croydon in Adelaide, again, it's roughly about a 15 minute journey from the center of the city. We've got 340,000 pounds. So again, um, some pretty, pretty good pricing there as well. Um, comes with a backyard and a tree out the front and a, a lovely white picket fence as well. Very Australian. Hackney in London. Now I'm, I'm not too familiar where Hackney is in London. I believe it's fairly exy. We're looking at 1.7 odd million dollars for this little lovely three bedroom place in Hackney. In Hackney in Adelaide, about 10, about 10 minutes from the center of the city with your own garage and a lovely leafy street. 450,000 pounds. So very, very good buying for anyone who's uh, keen to come across to South Australia. Gonna have to work on that one, Stefan, when we do our uh, little thing on uh, the high streets back in London when I come across. <laughs> so I thought I'd just very briefly touch on the uh, growth industries in South Australia. Obviously one of the key motivators for you wanting to study in South Australia is, is to come and enjoy the Australian lifestyle. Um, and it's important for you guys to understand um, the job situation and some of the key sectors that we've got here in terms of industry. So in South Australia, we have uh, nine key sectors. So the first one, um, health and medical industries, and there's been a significant investment, as you can imagine, on creating uh, indigenous capabilities around medical manufacturing. So we have a company here called Detmold, uh, which produces over a million masks a day for, for PPE protective gear, which is shipped around Australia and also around the world as well. Um, I'm gonna to touch on some of these. So I'm not gonna go through these line by line, but I'm gonna to touch on some of the, the key industries um, and where the jobs of the future are, or jobs currently and also the future are as well. Now, one of the, um, I guess, challenges that we're facing here in Australia is actually a skill shortage. Um, Australia has traditionally been, its growth or economic growth has been driven by overseas um, migration to Australia. Um, and without that tap being currently on, it's actually led to some significant job shortages across industries um, in Australia and also in South Australia as well. So prior to the pandemic kicking off, South Australia had some really, really favourable um, migration conditions for, for people wishing to move to Australia. Um, that is only increasing by the day as we still, um, our economies are ticking over. Again, we've been fairly robust in terms of um, our economy. It hasn't really suffered too, too much. Um, and, and so there are job, job shortages across all industries. One of the key drivers in South Australia um, and the reason why our industries are starting to take off is um, our state government had um, and also local councils have invested significant amounts of money on the infrastructure needed for the future. And so that includes essentially a, a 10 gigabit um, fibre optic network which crosses the central business district um, and that eliminates the tyranny of distance. So the, the um, flight time between Adelaide and London could be quite significant. However, the, um, it allows us to actually do business overseas almost in real time. So the National Broadband Network um, uh, exists in Adelaide, obviously, but we went a bit beyond that and said, okay, those fees that the National Broadband Network are offering are not sufficient enough to enable us to do business faster. So state and local government have invested millions of dollars in creating the infrastructure and the technology backbone to allow industry to grow. So some of those growth industries um, include creative industries. So um, many people don't know that a lot of the visual effects for, for major Hollywood films are actually produced here in South Australia. Um, so there's um, movies like Harry, Harry Potter, which I'm sure you're familiar with, uh, Hunger Games, Great Gatsby, and a whole host of other ones have all had their visual effects created right here in Adelaide. Uh, Technicolor, which is, uh, um, create, was the first company to create color motion pictures in the world. Um, have create, set up one of their subsidiaries, which is called Mill Films. Um, for, it's a $250 million investment in South Australia as well, or in Adelaide. So again, that same connection back to the film industry and the creative industries. Um, they are facing some significant shortages in, in identifying or getting talent around art direction and storyboard direction, all of those sort of um, design-centered kind of occupations. Um, they can't find them enough at the moment. So some significant opportunities there. 
food, wine and agribusiness one. Uh, Kat was drinking, I believe it was some white wine earlier before before a meeting. Oh, she won't, she wants me to be quiet. Okay. Um, but we produce around 65.5% of Australia's total wine exports. And of course, we're very famous here for our wine in the Barossa Valley and, and my personal favourite, the McLaren Vale as well. Um, we also produce over $20.3 billion worth of exports around fresh and frozen produce, and that goes out to 100 countries around the world. So very, very diversified. One of the things, and, and this picture that you can see on the screen is actually from a, a company called Sundrop Farms, and this is actually the future of agriculture. And I guess a lot of people sort of look at Australia and the classic cowboy with the um, you know, a, a, an Akubra hat on and standing in the field. Um, that, that vision obviously still exists in some parts, but it is certainly um, rapidly advanced. And now when you walk into these facilities um, that is producing the food of the world, um, it is essentially a, a, um, a sterile environment with all of the, the producers literally wearing lab coats and, and doing some pretty scientific um, stuff, which both the University of Adelaide is, is very familiar with as well. Um, in terms of the defence industry, we've got, um, I guess, a lot of geopolitical tension around the world at the moment, um, and our, our government is, is certainly investing in, in the defence capabilities of Australia. Um, and we have over $90 billion worth of um, defence projects currently underway in South Australia. Um, now, that's estimated to create up to 25,000 jobs. Um, the air war warfare destroyers, of which BAE Systems, which is a British company, um, was the lead contractor for that event, um, for that project, um, uh, actually employed over 4,000 people just building those um, three ships in, here in Australia, uh, or in Adelaide, I should say. We've also got a pipeline of some offshore patrol vessels which are being produced both here in, and in Adelaide and also in Perth. Um, and also in the pipeline is a further nine hunter-class anti-submarine warfare frigates, um, which will be built here right in, in Adelaide as well. And that then gets followed up with 12 um, brand new attack class submarines. And we've partnered with Naval Group, which is a French company to, to build those submarines of the future. Um, now, while um, uh, I guess international students generally may not get full access to the, to the really sensitive stuff, the, the, the highly classified parts of these projects, um, there are different levels of security clearance when it comes to defence and there's a whole plethora of, of um, I think around three and a half thousand smaller companies that uh, produce or are part of the supply chain for these particular projects. So the opportunities, I guess, not just in directly direct employment within defence, but also the more indirect uh, employment are vast and massive. Um, and I can tell you now they are screaming for, for labour and for, for talent to actually fill those positions across a broad range of disciplines. In terms of high tech is another kind of key sector in South Australia. And so we have uh, two kind of sections or two particular precincts, uh, which one of them is lot 14. And there's just over a billion dollars worth of investment that has gone into that precinct, both near the, uh, both UniSA and the University of Adelaide are involved in that. Um, and that has got 45 um, established companies and 56 startup uh, companies and over 1200 workers actually work at that precinct and that's looking to double over the next couple of years as well. Um, the stuff that they're doing around that is, is around artificial intelligence, cybersecurity, um, artificial intelligence and all of those sort of things which um, uh, brainier people than I uh, are studying and also investing. So, I mean, particularly in cybersecurity, uh, is a massive, massive in industry and, and some significant opportunities for graduates moving forward as well. Um, in terms of future power, you can see um, this is, we're not short of space in, in South Australia, and this is the world's largest uh, battery storage facility. Um, and for the first time, I think in Australia's history, South Australia actually ran completely 100% off renewable energy. Um, and that's generated through a variety of, of forms, predominantly from wind generation, um, now, obviously, uh, you need to capture that energy and store it to stabilise it in the grid. So we built um, this massive battery to, to stabilise our electricity generation. Um, based on our investments, I guess our state government's commitment to, to climate change and also to, to um, renewable energy, is it's actually attracted investment from overseas. So we now manufacture over 20,000 batteries for, uh, for home and commercial use right here in South Australia and Adelaide as well. Uh, in terms of skilled migration, um, we've been very, very open and transparent about the need um, for South Australia to grow its population. Again, um, the challenges that we face in terms of an ageing population in Australia, 
Um, traditionally, we haven't had the significant levels of population growth that Sydney and Melbourne, the our two largest capital cities have had. So therefore, it's really important um, to attract people to, to Adelaide um, and international graduates play a massive role of that. So our state government is, is very open about the, their um, desire to attract more people to more, more people here and as a result have some fairly favourable migration policies for those that are interested. Um, so I'm more than happy through our study options to provide you some further information really around uh, um, the policy settings for, for migration. Um, but there, it's essentially one of the best in Australia as, as far as we can, um, I'm obviously a little bit biased, but there's close to um, over 500 occupations available on our skilled occupation list in South Australia. What that is, is essentially um, our government goes out to all of the industries and says to those industries, okay, where are the skill shortages? Where do you need people? And they come back to the government and essentially come up with this uh, list of occupations um, that they need to fill. Um, and that's not to say they haven't tried to, to get or attract new people from overseas and from interstate to, to go into those occupations. Um, they just need to try extra hard, I guess, as well. So that's, that's why um, it then opens it up. So there's, I guess, a lot of opportunities depending on what uh, subject you study uh, through either undergraduate or postgraduate to go into those occupations later down the track. Um, when we talk about the word regional migration, it doesn't necessarily mean um, the sticks out of in the middle of nowhere, as I mentioned, Adelaide is a capital city. Um, it's just our definition of migration. We call anything essentially outside Sydney and Melbourne regional, and then there's outer regional and some other definitions. But the benefit of studying in Adelaide is essentially, we use a points-based system for migration here in Australia. I think the UK has just uh, implemented a similar system in, in recent times. Um, and essentially you get bonus points. So if you, instead of choosing to study in Sydney and Melbourne, where um, you will just be, uh, um, get the normal points allocation, just by choosing South Australia um, and going through the, the skilled migration nomination process here, you can get up to 15 um, extra points to help with your application, um, which will eventually lead to PR. For studying in South Australia as well, you also can get access to an additional five points and that's for studying in a regional destination. So some really fantastic additional ways to fast track that process uh, through to permanent residency and hopefully citizenship down the track. Um, as international graduates, we also have some access waivers that are available. Now, there's quite a few of them, so I'm not gonna go through them all in, in detail, but essentially um, there, it's essentially, if you're a good performing student and you've studied in South Australia, um, you can access a lot of these waivers, which again, helps your processing uh, to get into South Australia a bit faster post-graduation. Um, so I've sort of really briefly touched on those bits and pieces and I'm very conscious of time, but we have a dedicated website um, called migration.sa.gov.au. And again, I'm happy to share further questions and details about all of these migration policies um, through Stefan and the team at Study Options. But we'd really encourage you to jump onto this website and explore it. It's, it's a very clear kind of outline about some of the occupations and the process as well uh, in terms of, of um, uh, applying for nomination to come to South Australia and settle here permanently. And I think I'll leave it there. So I will. <laughs> Great, thank you, Andrew. That was, that was brilliant. Um, it was it was great to see the Adelaide Oval there, and actually on, on my last trip, I think I think you probably know I managed to in five days I got to watch uh, <laughs> Australia Bangladesh at the Oval, and then I also managed to get a ticket to um, to see Elton John in in the five days. Oh that I was wow! There. And that you know, living in the UK, accessibility of entertainment and sport is 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 so hard. Um, I think I, I think I looked up. My wife was very annoyed that I. would I'd gone to the Elton John concert. So I said, look, it's okay. I'll have a look and I'm sure he's going to be in London. And I looked at the, the prices for London and the cheapest ticket I could get was 500 pounds. And I had wow. paid, I think I'd paid uh, 60 pounds for my ticket two days before the actual concert. So it's great. The accessibility and, and what you can do in, in, in Adelaide and South Australia is, is fantastic. Um, I've got a couple of questions that have been emailed over Andrew. So Sure. One of this has kind of been met, is you've kind of dealt with already. So Stefan has said that South Australia is one of the best places for graduates to gain PR. Um, certainly that's what I'm hearing from, from migration agents. And I think that, you know, you've kind of, you've kind of um, echoed that anyway, that actually it's, it's, you know, you really do want, you know, very good um, graduates to, to, to study and, and to remain in the state. So 
Um, I think we've dealt with that. Um, is there a big British expat community in Adelaide and where do they tend to live? The, there is actually a big British expat community. There's a big British expat community right around the world, um, but um, it doesn't matter where you go. We always sort of um, bump into to British expats and it's the same when we go overseas. There's a bunch of Aussie expats basically everywhere you as well. Um, there's actually not really any particular concentration as far as I'm aware. Um, and there are some, some forums and some, some websites that um, I could share with you for you to, to sort of get information directly um, from your fellow countrymen. Um, but they're pretty much everywhere, to, to be honest with you. Um, some of our best friends are from the UK um, and we always uh, can pick up on the slight accents as well. So uh, I'll be honest with you and I couldn't tell you that there's, no, there's not necessarily an enclave. Um, they sort of tend to spread out all over the city depending on uh, the lifestyle choice that they make. Probably near the beach, Andrew. Probably, yes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and the other one I've got again was kind of relating to um, job opportunities for a partner of someone that's on a master's, um, studying a master's. So the one thing to bear in sure. mind there, if the student is studying a master's, the partner will have full work rights. So that's you know, a great opportunity to kind of to, to continue with a, with, a, with a career. Um, and the other one is actually from me, um, and it's kind of I guess updating my knowledge so a lot of our families like to buy property in Australia my understanding and this may be a little bit outdated is that um, you would need to get foreign investment review board authority in order to buy a property as an international student is that still true oh, oh that's beyond my um yeah. okay I think it is I, mean, it, it's, I think one. it's one of one of the only probably the possibly one of the only temporary visas that does allow you to buy property but it has to be with Foreign Investment Review Board authority, and there has to be there's a, there's a certain limit. Vivek is Vivek is nodding his head, so I'm assuming he knows what I'm talking about. Um, I think you're correct, Stefan, because uh, I've been managing Southeast Asia for a few years now, and a lot of students, of course, they are accompanied by their parents from Singapore, yeah. especially in Malaysia, and uh, they're quite young students. They're not like really in post grad area. But definitely, they tend to, you know, go into that area where they would buy, you know, an apartment. It yeah. may not be in house, but could be an apartment on high rise. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Fantastic. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, thank you, Andrew. Um, always great to to catch up with you. Um, and now, Vivek, it's over to you um, from Vivek from the University of Adelaide. Excellent. Thank you, Stefan. Thank you, Sarah, and Study Options team for this wonderful opportunity and. It's always wonderful to have someone from Study Adelaide, especially, thank you, Andrew, you made our life quite easy as well. Uh, I'm gonna share my screen quickly. Uh, and Can you please confirm, Stefan, can you see my yeah, screen? Yeah, all good, Vivek. Yeah, great. Uh, Thank you, everybody. Uh, my name is Vivek. I'm the regional manager for Southeast Asia, Europe, and the Americas. And we've been working with study options for a while, and they're such an integral part of our internationalization. And, uh, you know, especially with the outreach in the UK, I happen to have, you know, meet Stefan a couple of years back when Stefan was in Adelaide, and, and, and definitely we had a wonderful time together. Uh, Andrew has touched on quite a bit in terms of Adelaide, uh, key areas, which I actually did a bit of work to put together those things. So I think I might just jump straight to the University of Adelaide. Um, as Andrew mentioned, in Adelaide, there are three public universities. We also have University of South Australia with us, which of course, Kat would go through, but my, uh, I would definitely go uh, with, you know, some of the overview for the University of Adelaide. University of Adelaide is the third oldest university in Australia established in 1874. It's a comprehensive universities with more than 200 programs, uh, five different faculties, and within each faculty, we have multiple schools, which I would definitely take you all through uh, during my presentation. I've actually made my presentation slides quite wordy, to be honest. So it's not to, that I would not read everything now, but it is because I would be sharing my slides with Stefan and then if he can share with you, it, I think it'll be a good self-learning opportunity for all of you as well. Uh, and from a student to staff ratio perspective, it's 22 to one. Sorry, just give me a second. 
And something that's quite special to the university, we're actually been celebrating like a woman month at the University of Adelaide is the first university to admit women to academic courses. There are three campuses for the University of Adelaide. Uh, the main campus, which is right in the central business district where 90% of our programs are delivered, both undergrad and postgrad, is, uh, is, is a North Terrace campus. The name actually, you know, uh, is quite relevant because if you look at the map of Adelaide, uh, CBD is quite in a square shape and our university is based on the north end of the campus. The second uh, campus, which is about one hour drive from the CBD is the Roseworthy campus. And that campus has a unique uh, relevance to uh, our study areas and also the general community around is because it comprises our one of the biggest uh, veterinary biosciences school. The third campus, which Andrew also touch base is something that is very close to University of Adelaide's heart and also to South Australia in general, because we are an agricultural state. Uh, that's where we teach our agribusiness, food, wine, and nutrition programs, which is at the Wade campus. So I'm sure a lot of you, if you would have done some research, University of Adelaide is one of the group of eight members, which is a prestigious university is known for research intensive universities. They're quite traditional and historical in their sense with the sandstone buildings, which I'm sure you would see a lot of them being in the UK. Uh, it's ranked in top 1% universities in the world. It is associated with five Nobel laureates. So if you compare that to, uh, any bigger university such as Uni Melbourne or you know ANU or Monash, University of Adelaide is quite small in size, but if you look at the number of research income and also the number of Nobel laureates it has produced, it's quite significant to, for a such university as well. And there are about 120 exchange partners for the university, which is such a strength for a global university like the University of Adelaide because Every one in three students tends to study overseas from the university, which at the moment is quite tricky, you know, and it's such a sad point that the students are not able to do it. But our global uh, mobility team, they have done a fantastic job where they are able to bring those, uh, uh, you know, opportunities to students through virtual uh, medium. And, and I'm sure it will be quite similar at UniSA as well. Um, so, as I already mentioned, University of Adelaide being quite historical, traditional, and, and you know, uh, with the sandstone buildings, but that it doesn't stop there. It's quite futuristic in, in, in the work that's happening around. So university has been in quite progressive in their, uh, you know, investment of what's happening uh, with the facilities around. So they've spent more than um, half a billion dollars in, in, in last few years with the you know, one of the biggest being Adelaide Health and Medical Sciences building, uh, which uh, Andrew just touched base about the health prison, which is the Adelaide Biomedical City, where uh, University of South Australia also has a, a significant presence there. And we, you know, both the universities comprise that uh, west end of the city as, as, you know, one of the something that, you know, people have an eye on. Um, another area where university has spent a lot of money uh, and, and investment is to make wonderful facility for our student is, is, is our student hub, which is fantastic. And, and in terms of studies, there's a new dental simulation lab, uh, you know, a six star Inkani engineering building and, and a vet science building. So as I already mentioned, there are five faculties uh, at the University of Adelaide, one being, uh, you know, arts and arts comprises of the oldest music school in Australia. Uh, it's, it's, it's the Elder Consortium for Music, and there are other schools that are uh, within the Faculty of Arts, which is School of Education, Humanities, and Social Sciences. I'll quickly let you skim through these, but definitely, you know, after my presentation, we will be sharing the link and you can definitely go uh, and read all of these things yourself. One of the uh, things that I would like to mention here is our strength areas is the immersive media technologies, media strategic communication, and recently launched the public policy program, which falls under our School of Government, uh, which definitely you can read a little bit more from our uh, website as well. 
And also we've got School of Education, as I clearly mentioned before, this Master of Education and Teaching, but teaching we only focus on middle and secondary areas. So education, you don't need prior experience, but in teaching, you definitely need prior teaching qualification. The second uh, faculty that I would like to speak today is uh, the Engineering, Computer and Mathematical Sciences. We, we, we call it ECMS. So ECMS is the second biggest faculty at the University of Adelaide. It's quite dear and it's quite close to my heart because I come from an engineering and technology background. Uh, it's quite huge and comprehensive. There are lots of areas to specialize, minors, majors. Uh, as you can already see, there are eight different schools. And one thing that I would like to mention here is uh, the ECMS faculty is quite reputed and, and renowned around the world because that's one of the uh, area where university specializes in. And most of our programs that are offered within the ECMS are ranked in the top 50 in the world. And, uh, and also as Andrew from Study Added mentioned that, uh, you know, some of our areas within the ECMS faculty and some of our schools are co-located with Lot 14, such as our Australian Institute of Machine Learning. That's one of its biggest and one of its kind in whole Australia, where a lot of focus is happening on computer vision, cybersecurity, defense, machine learning, uh, uh, artificial intelligence, computer science. There's so many areas that's happening around in at Lot 14. And also this is a lot of these research is pumped through the Australian Institute of Machine Learning, which is co-funded by the government and the University of Adelaide. These are all the programs, which again, I don't have to go through at the moment, but definitely, you know, when we share the slides with you, you can definitely go through them uh, on your own. Uh, I think one of the key areas which I would like to mention it is, which is quite important when you choose a program, which I'm sure study options would really guide you well, is to choose a program that is accredited uh, in Australia and recognized globally, which is very important. I myself studied, uh, uh, came as an international student about nine years back in Australia and, 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 and I've been living ever since in Adelaide, such a wonderful place. And I studied a program that was accredited by Australian Computer Society. So most of our programs in the ECMS faculty are accredited by ACS or either they are accredited by Engineers Australia, which basically means if you are looking at uh, you know, state migration or, or an independent migration, you don't have to go through the hassle of getting those you know, transcripts and blah, blah. There's so many, you know, areas which I'm sure you don't need to talk about at the moment, but these accreditations really help you. And, and also it gives you confidence that these, uh, you know, uh, courses comes with certain uh, quality assurance as well. And another strength part of these uh, faculty is, or if not all, a lot of our programs, they come with a 12 week internship component, which you as an individual, have uh, you know the independence of finding an employer yourself, but definitely through our Ask ECMS, which comprises of internships and career services team, they help you to source these opportunities also. Next, uh, quite important these days, health and medical sciences faculties, and a lot happening in in in, in Australia in general, and especially in South Australia in this field. Um, so what I already spoke to you about the Adelaide Biomedical City, is, which is one of its kind and one of the biggest uh, biomedical precinct in the Southern Hemisphere. So there's lots happening in cancer research, COVID sniffing dog, you know, um, uh, lots and lots of different areas in allied health, in, 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 in our traditional degrees, uh, which is uh, dentistry, medicine, and other areas also. So University of Adelaide specializes in uh, medicine and dentistry. And also from last year, we've launched our uh, uh, new school of allied health and practice where we uh, also focus on uh, physiotherapy, occupational therapy, and uh, speech pathology from an undergrad perspective also. And also we're quite popular in the school of psychology as well. Probably I spend a bit of time on the medicine uh, program. It's a, 
and, and also dentistry that I'll quickly skim through. So University of Adelaide is, is uh, as I already mentioned, it's quite old, but we're known for producing doctors and dentists for more than 100 years. And, 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 and most of our programs are ranked in top 10 and top 15 in the world, which is, which is fantastic for a university of, of such size. And uh, especially uh, the region that is very dear to me, Southeast Asia, which I've been managing from last three years, is quite popular, the health and medical sciences program. And a lot of students, when you come here, you will interact with them. They tend to do such programs. You know, There are some regional areas where students focus on certain areas and certain specializations also. Um, and also, if you don't come from a very uh, health background, there is still an opportunity for you to be part of public health. Uh, that's an area where it's a management program in health and with some technical expertise as well. And I think we need a lot of people with general skills at the moment who can get together a lot of technical uh, you know, people together and, and, and to get the work done basically. And these are all our quota-based programs and there are certain quotas which I'm sure uh, you can uh, have a chat with Stefan at Study Option and they will be able to guide you in terms of how feasible is it looking for you to be able to make it to such programs. It's such a comprehensive uh, uh, application process, but I will leave it there. I think uh, we can keep moving actually. Our biggest faculty, uh, professions, it's a very interesting name. It's basically is a business faculty. Uh, it's our uh, biggest faculty in terms of number of students and the research outcome that they produce. It's a comprises of Adelaide Business School, Law School, and the School of Economics. Our, best, our business school is AACSP accredited as I'm sure University of South Australia Business School is, which uh, sort of recognizes uh, you know, a quality assurance component, but also gives you a confidence as a student that you're not only studying in, in a business school because there are infinite business schools in the world, but you're studying in a school which is you know, ranked in top 5% globally, which gives you a lot of confidence because not all schools are accredited in that way. Um, some of our uh, uh, you know, students have studied and they've made it really big around the world. And they have definitely come back if they're wanting to work in a very, you know, tricky industries like, you know, uh, stock exchange and, 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 and for some of the overseas government agencies. And I think these accreditations have really helped them to put their CVs in front of those business, you know, directors and the leaders saying that you've studied in one of the very good schools and that really helps them to put things going forward. Um, one thing quite similar to lot 14 within our faculty of professions is Think Lab. So Think Lab is a business incubator, one of the biggest, and also just for your reference, University of Adelaide is the number one and only accredited entrepreneurial university in Australia, which is quite dear to our heart. Uh, it has produced number of startups around uh, the globe. We have three Think Labs. Uh, around the world, one in France, one in Singapore, and the other one in Adelaide, uh, uh, where the university is located within our Faculty of Professions. And also, uh, you know, Faculty of Professions houses uh, the Center of Global Food and Resources. As I mentioned, it's quite, uh, plays a quite significant role for the university community and, and from an economic perspective to our state also. Uh, quite comprehensive, many areas, but you know, from, a, from an undergrad perspective, business, commerce, and economics. Uh, from a, from a uh, postgraduate perspective, there are many areas that you can specialize, but of, 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 of course, it's quite flexible if you wanna choose specializations also. We also do a MBA program and there are multiple MBA programs for international students also depending on what's your background, what you've studied in the past, how many years of work experience and what you're currently doing at the moment and what are your motivations also uh, that you can choose from also. And our MBA is ranked number second in Australia after University of Sydney by the Boss Magazine. Uh, there are different specialization that you can choose from, which is entrepreneurship, international trade, marketing, and project management. And one of the things that is missing here is our wine business program, which I can definitely talk to you uh, in, in the later part. Faculty of Sciences um, is uh, 
one of the faculties at the University of Adelaide uh, that does a lot of work in agricultural sciences, food, nutrition, biological sciences, animal veterinary sciences also. I'm gonna focus a bit on the agriculture, food and wine, uh, which I'm sure uh, some of you are interested to know. And it's such an amazing historical and still growing industry uh, in Australia and especially in South Australia. Um, and, and, and there's definitely a lot of love for Australian wines across the globe. Um, you know, we definitely love it ourselves. And, and, and you know, there's, there's an amazing opportunities for those, uh, you know, uh, for that industry to look for champions who can bring those, uh, you know, industry across uh, the, the globe and, and also in front of the people who, who enjoy these, uh, you know, drinks. So I think there's definitely opportunities. And from uh, what I could remember last time when we were presented this uh, with the, you know, Dean of the school is there's from a quantitative perspective, there's five jobs for every one graduate from our School of Agriculture, Food and Wine, which is just to give you and put things in perspective. There are enormous opportunities for smarter people who are quite outgoing, forward thinking, and not afraid to jump and get their hands dirty. So I think it's quite wonderful. And, 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 and we've already seen from the uptake of, you know, from future students on these programs is absolutely wonderful and really, really diversified classrooms also, which I'm sure if you become a part of it, you are gonna love it also. And also, um, if you follow Australian news, we had a devastating end to 2020. We had bushfires and that's where our, uh, uh, you know, wait campus uh, school where the agriculture sciences program is taught comes, uh, you know, quite handy where a lot of the research and the wines were produced in the campus. Um, I'll keep moving. Uh, I can leave these things here. And how to apply, you know, I would strongly recommend uh, you visit study options office and they would be able to guide you not in terms of admissions, but also if there are any scholarships that, uh, you know, you can be eligible for. And also, you know, how this program relates to the industry sector in South Australia and also employment. And also going forward, you know, if there are opportunities for you to stay back also. Just before I quickly finish, I would like to mention about the University of Adelaide College, which is our preferred pathway uh, to the university for both undergrad and postgraduate programs. In there can be multiple areas, but if you are not able to get into the university directly, don't worry, there are options that you can still access a group of eight education through the University of Adelaide College, which are really dear friends of us. And, and I'm sure Stefan would be able to guide you really well. And we've got scholarships, quite generous and quite handsome scholarships for our future students, which I'm sure Stefan study options can guide you, but our scholarships range from 15 to 50%, but that depends on your academic background, your work experience, and also the program that you're going to study with us at the University of Adelaide. Um, I think I'm gonna quite skip through the services, um, which I can talk to you about, Stefan, if you have any question after, but I think something that I would focus on is the career support and internships, which is quite critical, not only for your success, but also for the success of the university that, you know, you when you come here, it's not a new country for you. You're, you know, you, you need to get used to how people work, how do they speak, how do they, you know, value your skills and all those skills are taught in your classroom through the industry professionals, through our you know, career services coordinators also. Wow, I think I should uh, end here, Stefan. <laughs> that was great. Thank you, Vivek. <laughs> um, that was great. I mean, it, I, I, I had the pleasure of spending five days with you guys back in November 2019. So my- uh, my That was my, wonderful though. University of Adelaide knowledge is, is, is pretty good at the moment. Um, so I just got a couple of questions. I mean, you've kind of touched on the scholarships already. That was one question that, that I had. Um, I mean, and I know from kind of from our students, we have got uh, a number of our students have been successful in, in, in getting that 30% um, scholarship, which is great. So yeah, some really good um, options for scholarships. The other question I did have was in relation to your wine business. So wine business is, is it's an interesting one, isn't it? I mean, it's it's very unique to you guys, um, yeah. and it's 
it's a course that attracts quite quite interesting students from our end actually we've got a absolutely you know, uh, just to give you a background stefan i think it's quite uh important critical not only to the university as i mentioned quite important to australia in general as andrew mentioned we produce almost about 70 percent of the premium wine for whole australia so i think if you're looking at that industry it really depends how you are looking at the career you know uh, a lot of people that we tend to speak with and the future students are someone who would want to learn to produce wine but if you're someone who doesn't want to get the hands dirty and learn how to you know create wine is someone we also teach how to sell wine you know mm -hmm. how to create a business out of, of the you know winery industry so you know you can be yourself as a center manager retail manager commercial directors you know you can also work with the government and advise them there are many areas that you know our students have actually gone out and worked yeah. You know, and I'm and I'm sure I'm, I'm, if I remember correctly, we actually visited the Lane Vineyard when you were with us yeah. for, for one of the wine tasting event that was actually run. It's one of the very successful wineries in Australia, and it's actually run by one of our alumni who actually learned it. But now he turned that into a full flown business, which is one of the most loved wine, if not in Australia, around the world. Yeah. No, absolutely. And it, I think what's great is that that program does attract such a such a broad range of people. We've got a I know we've got a couple that are um, studying part of it online at the moment and they're you know, their background is finance. I know we've had a we've had a um, I think she was kind of women's champion for motorsport. She enrolled in it a couple of years <laughs> ago. So it's great. It's, it's, it's you know, fantastic course. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, that was specifically kind of talking about employment, employment prospects, but you'd kind of, you've kind of covered that. So um, thank you, Vivek. Um, hope to see no you problem. again fairly soon. Um, Can't wait. To now, uh, thank you for this opportunity. Not at all. Um, last but not least, we have Kat from the University of South Australia. So over to you, Kat. Hello. Hey, Stephen. How are we going for time? I'm just conscious that I think we had about. Don't worry. We got. We've got plenty of time. Just. We got time. Go, all go right. You it. guys stick around. Stick with me. Uh, so hi, everyone. My name is and I'm here from the University of South Australia. Um, but you can call us UniSA because that's what we call ourselves. As you know, Aussies like to abbreviate everything, so UniSA it is. Um, so going from um, one of the oldest universities in the country to one of the youngest universities in the country, quite a change of temperature here, I think. Um, I would so love to be there with you guys in person, but um, I'd love to be in the UK in general, actually. But um, I'm so delighted that you guys have spent some time this morning, this afternoon to, to be with us virtually. Um, thank you so much to Andy and to you, Rebecca, as well, for the great introduction. It's um, actually one of my favourite topics is talking about Adelaide and the University of South Australia and the UniSA. And of course, thank you for your options for having us as well. Uh, so kind of also the opposite to, to Vivek, I've actually got a presentation which is pretty much full of pictures because I'm a very visual person and so that's how I'm going to go through just to give you a bit of an idea um, about what it's like to study at UniSA and to live in the great city of Adelaide. Um, so just for some context, uh, UniSA is actually the largest university in the state of South Australia, so 35,000 students give or take, and roughly a quarter of those are international students. Um, and like I mentioned, quite opposite from the University of Adelaide, we are only 30 years old. So we turned 30 this year, which is pretty exciting for us. Um, just a baby on the scene. Um, thank you very much, but we are already ranked in the world's top 50 universities under 50 years old, which we are, of course, really, really proud of. Um, so I could talk to you all about the university's enterprise plan and our approach to things, but I think ultimately what everything comes down to is these two kind of major facets. One is we're about the student experience and two, we're about student outcomes. And these are real focuses for us at UniSA and you'll see it's a bit of a common theme throughout our programs and throughout our campus cultures and also throughout my presentation tonight. Um, so as you can see here on the screen, we're very well regarded for student experience. And some of these are external rankings, but a lot of these rankings actually come from the students themselves through surveys and through student barometers. So we're really, really happy to see that the students actually are enjoying studying with us and they're having the student experience that we want them to. Uh, the other way that that, um, that kind of, you know, fact that focus on student experience and student outcomes, you can really see that is through our connection with industry. Um, so we really pride ourselves on real world practical experience and our engagement with industry. We're a member of the ATN, the Australian Techno Tech 
technology network, um, which is a, a network of a small network of universities have a really strong industry engagement. So our programs, our degrees are designed to meet evolving industry needs. Students work on real world projects and they're taught by and they're exposed to professionals in their field. So this basically ensures that our graduates have the skills they need to succeed in their chosen career and also means that there are jobs in their chosen fields of study because we design our programs based on industry needs. Like I mentioned, a comprehensive university, very similar to the University of Adelaide in that regard with over 200 degree programs. We um, separate ours into seven academic units or seven faculties, if you like, um, covering a broad range of uh, study areas. So I'll talk a little bit about the university's response to the um, international border closures. As we're all well aware, Australia has currently closed our borders to international guests, which is a bit of a shame. Um, it has meant that we've had quite a, a good lifestyle here for the last year or so, the last 18 months or so, but it does mean that our students are having to start their studies online. So I know that some students would prefer to wait until they can join us on campus, but I know a lot of people that would rather not put their plans on hold for too much longer. And for those people, we're offering some pretty generous um, discount on course fees. Uh, so this is for every uh, course taken online. There's a significant reduction in course fees across the board, doesn't matter which discipline they're in. So between a 20 and 40% saving, depending on the program. Not every program is available for online study. We've been really careful about the programs that we've chosen for online study and mapped them really carefully against the courses that are available. We want to make sure that we are still giving students an exceptional student experience and we don't want to sacrifice the quality. The courses that are online are mostly offered through UniSA Online, strangely enough, um, which is delivering some of the best student experiences um, in online study in the country, which is really fantastic. And if you're kind of curious about which programs you can and which programs you can't take online, just shoot through an email to, um, to Stefan or to myself and we're happy to sort you out there. So a little bit about the um, faculty or the academic units themselves. So Allied Health and Human Performance, as you can see there on the right hand side, again, strong focus on practical engagement. So over a million hours of clinical placement um, with more than two and a half thousand placement locations. So really strong focus there and making sure students have real world practical experience. Uh, we're ranked in the world top 100 for exercise and sports science and um, a top five in Australia for student satisfaction in physiotherapy and OT. Um, and uh, top 10 in Australia for graduate careers in health sciences. Now I did pick out a couple of particular programs I wanted to draw your attention to, but I am conscious of the time. So I am gonna kind of skip through those, but I'm more than happy to take any questions that you might have afterwards. Um, and you're more than welcome to shoot me through an email and we can talk about things in a bit more detail. So uni is a business, and like as Vivek mentioned also, you know, business is business is business. So what sets a business school apart? Well, I'll tell you three things that set uni is a business school apart. But first, I will just mention um, that we have been ranked five stars for excellence, world's top 50 for hospitality and tourism, number one in SA for graduate careers in business management, and top 10 in Australia for business and economics. And we are the only business school in South Australia to have AACSB accreditation, as well as have Equus accreditation, which puts us in the top 1% of business schools in the world. So those three kind of pillars that I think set UniSA Business School apart from some of the other business schools that, um, that you may be considering is the social, academic and professional. So everything that we do in the business school really kind of falls under one of these three pillars, whether it be social, so events on campus, networking with other students outside of the classroom, community uh, events on campus, uh, whether it be academic, so these peer-assisted study sessions, past sessions, which is with student, helping students to succeed in their coursework, guest lecturers, or through the business hub, and then professional. So once again, you know, really focusing on graduate outcomes and bringing the industry into the university. So we do that through career mentorships and through executive residence. And we also, of course, send our students out into industry through a number of business internships. So those mentorship programs are really quite unique to the university. We have those available for students in bachelor programs and in master's programs. Um, and it's a really great way to access industry professionals. Um, you know, you can partner with an industry professional either in a one-on-one -on -one setting or as a group. 
um, and there's lots of different services they can help you provide. So it's not just about identifying career goals or honing interview skills, um, but really it's a lot about the networking that becomes available to you. So these are, you know, these are experts in the industry that have been working for many years in their field. And of course, they've built up significant networks and the students who uh, benefit from the mentorship program gain access to these professionals and therefore to the network, which as you can imagine, is a really great leg up when it comes to looking for employment after graduation. And the third thing which I personally think is really cool about the University of Business School is the Aaron Bay Bass Institute. And this is probably only interesting for you if you kind of are interested in marketing or maybe even psychology, but I think it's the coolest thing. So the Aaron Bay Bass Institute is the world's largest institute for research into marketing. Uh, so through a corporate sponsorship program, uh, this, uh, yeah, massive international companies gain access to the research that our researchers are, are putting out. So our researchers are advising, you know, the board of major companies like Mars, Coca-Cola, Procter & Gamble, ESPN, advising the boards of those companies about what we are learning in marketing. And those same advisors are designing our curriculum and they're also teaching our students. And it's really interesting stuff. So they're challenging a lot of the kind of conventionally held ideas about marketing, things that we have always kind of thought to be true, but they're kind of challenging those ideas. So I personally think this is exceptionally cool and it's only available at UniSA through marketing here. So if you're a bit of a marketing geek, that's pretty great. Uh, so moving away from business now into some of the other faculties, clinical and health sciences here, which is home to nursing, midwifery, pharmacy, pharmaceutical sciences, and nutrition. So world's top 150 for pharmacy and pharmacology and top 100 in the world for nursing um, and top 10 in Australia for graduate careers in health services. So as you can see, once again, those kind of stats about graduate careers, graduate outcomes, they're really coming through quite strongly. Can you say creative? Very creatively named, ironically enough, is where you find our creative programs, uh, including architecture. So contemporary art, communications, journalism, design, film, and also urban and regional planning. And uh, once again, number one in SA for graduate careers in architecture and the environment, um, and uh, top 10 in Australia for graduate careers in creative arts. So it's a really, really strong, very creative program. Once again, strong, strong industry engagement. We find lots of different ways to be able to bring the industry into the university and bring the university out to industry through ways of placements or through ways of joint projects. Moving on to education, language, literacy, and teaching. Uh, so world's top 150 for education and number one in graduate in, in South Australia for graduate careers in teaching. So we offer teaching at bachelor level and at master's level. So early childhood, primary and secondary education available at master's level. And one of the great things about taking a teaching program with the University of South Australia is access to the Samsung Smart School, which is a really recent addition to the university. It's based um, on a, one of our campuses about 20 minutes from the city itself and is one of the most technologically advanced teacher training facilities in the country. So uh, it's, it's used not only for training our student teachers, but we also bring in classroom school of students, so primary students, middle school students, or secondary school students into the classroom to kind of experience what we call the classroom of the future. Um, it's really, really cool. It's quite exciting to be able to train students in what will soon become we're hoping quite commonplace across classrooms all around the country. Moving on to justice in society. So law here, psychology, social work, social sciences. Um, once again, top 10 in Australia for graduate careers in social work and world's top 25 for law. Um, and once again, social work, a strong focus on placements um, through two 500 hour placements in both bachelor and master's level, and also through um, use of our interactive, innovative, custom-built social work and human services studio, where students can actually record themselves and then watch themselves afterwards and be able to learn from each other and learn from their teachers about, you know, what's, what's working and, and what they can improve on. So lastly, science, tech, engineering and mathematics. So again, being a member of the ATN, the Australian Tech Network, this is a really kind of a no-brainer for us to be very industry connected here. Um, top 10 in the country for quality engineering and top 10 in the country for computer sciences um, with our uh, research rated at world class or above, which we're very proud of. Once again, I will skip through a couple of these programs, but I can, I'm very happy to talk through them in a bit more detail a little bit later on. Uh, but what I will talk about just briefly is our Master of Project Management, which is a really cool program at UniSA. 
So we were one of the first project management degrees in the country and um, with a 70% Australian student enrollment in this program, which is quite unique in, um, for Australian postgrad qualifications because a lot of Aussies don't tend to study their masters until a bit later on in life. And what we're seeing now a bit more and more is a trend that employers are looking for students with a qualification in project management, even more so than an MBA, for example. I think that's because of the changing nature of employment. A lot of jobs these days tend to be quite project-based. So having skills in project management is actually really, really important. Um, there's no national accrediting body for project management. We do have the endorsement of the Australian Institute of Project Management, of course, um, as well as the American Institute. And once again, just making sure that we keep that industry engagement relevant with our connections through our teaching staff and also through guest lecturers. Okay, moving away now from the faculties themselves, I'll talk a little bit about scholarships. So at the moment, UniSA has two different kinds of scholarships available for international students. The first is the Vice Chancellor's International Excellence Scholarship, BCIES, which is a 50% reduction in tuition fees for up to four years of full-time study. This one is quite uh, competitive and it's, it's, um, it's quite prestigious, quite hard to get this one. It's an invite only. So if you think that you might actually meet the criteria for this particular scholarship, just flag that with, um, with Stefan and um, he can have a chat with me and we can have a look and, and invite you to apply for it. If not, however, we do have a second scholarship available, which is a 15% reduction in fees for the duration of, this, of your program. So eligibility for this one is simply an upper second or maybe a 60% in undergraduate studies. And that's pretty much it. Um, and then that one, is, there's no application form for it. That's just assessed by our staff here and we'll apply that for you should you meet the requirements. Now, once again, student support, really, really strong um, focus at the university here. I won't go into too much detail because I think I told you a bit about that at the start, but you know, this is something that we do pride ourselves on to make sure that our students feel supported. And again, to make sure our students are graduate ready, we have a very dedicated career services team that look after students and help them with their employment outcomes once they've graduated, but also to help them find employment while they're working at, <laughs> while they're studying at the university. Um, and of course, as I'm sure you know, um, as an international student on a student visa, you can work while you're studying and living here in Adelaide. Um, and it's not actually too difficult to find a job while you're here. You know, it's, it's a big city, but um, it's not as competitive as some of the larger East Coast cities. It's not too difficult to find employment. Very briefly, four campuses is what we have. Two of them are located right here in the Adelaide CBD, City East and City West. As you can tell, we're not very imaginative with our names. And just for context, that's the central train station there in the middle. We've got two other campuses. One is about 20 minutes by bus away, and that's the one that I studied at actually. And then one more campus about 15, 20 minutes by train, which is Mawson Lakes. They're all beautiful. They've all got their fantastic pros near shopping, near dining, near restaurants. Uh, near the Adelaide Botanic Gardens and City East Campus is actually right next door to our dear neighbour at the University of Adelaide. So we do get along quite well. All of the campuses are um, designed with students in mind. So they're quite uh, comfortable, they're quite um, easy to get around. Um, and we really have tried to consider students in the design. So for example, in the lockers and some of the libraries, we have um, uh, power outlets at the back of the locker. So if you wanted to, if you're studying on campus, you can actually put your laptop away, charge it, lock it, walk away, and then come back when you're ready to keep on studying. Power technologies to ensure that our students actually do have the skills that they need to succeed in the workplace. So they'll actually be using the technology set that they will be um, employing once they've graduated and, and, have, and have their jobs afterwards. And again, a very vibrant campus community. We wanna make sure that people feel how uh, included and welcomed and um, having a really nice time making connections outside of the classroom. I won't talk about this one at all because Andy more than covered this at the start of his presentation. Although I was, um, just a fun fact, I actually live in Croydon, South Australia, and I was delighted to learn that I might get uh, 340,000 pounds in my house. So that's pretty exciting for me. Uh, that's something as well. Uh, so outdoor adventure, so as we mentioned before, the weather in Adelaide is fantastic most of the year round, it's quite sunny, um, which means it's a great place for outdoor adventure, it's a great place for couples, for singles, for families, there's heaps of stuff to see and do. Going camping is a no-brainer, you know, it was Mother's Day just in the last weekend, so we took mum up to the wineries, she had a great time. And I want to close just on this image here, which is one of my favourite things about Adelaide. 
So we're on the south coast of the country, but we actually face to the west, which means that you can watch the sun go down over the ocean, which legitimately is one of my favourite things about the city, and it's the thing that I miss the most when I go travelling. Um, so I know that it's, it, you can't actually get into the country just yet, but soon you'll be able to, and I really cannot wait to see you here, to welcome you here, and introduce you to this fantastic sunset. So that's all from me. I'll hand back to Stephanie for some Q&A, but yeah, really looking forward to seeing you guys and I'm happy to take some questions if you've got them. Fabulous, thank you, Kat. Um, I've just got, I mean, I've got a question about teaching, which I know you've, you've kind of, you talked about the fact that you do have the three streams, um, which is actually quite rare, you know, dealing with lots of universities, it's quite rare for university to have those three streams. Um, it's one of our most popular um, postgraduate programs. Um, Funnily enough, early childhood and secondary seem to be the most popular of those streams, which are the areas that are most in demand in Australia. Um, I've just got a question about the, which I cannot, I've just looked it up, but um, about which of those teaching programs can be studied online. Yeah, yeah, great question. Um, so at the moment, only the um, Master of Secondary Education has a, a mid-year, so a July intake, and that one is available for online study. Yeah. Um, which is great. The, the two other streams, early childhood and primary, don't actually have a July start normally. Um, at the moment, we're still kind of making a decision about what's going to happen for the February semester 2022. We would very, very much like to have students on campus by February next year. But it's, it's yeah, exactly right. But it's quite a, quite a great area. And we're still working through then what we'll do for February next year if we can't have borders open. Um, and so I don't think we've got those mapped. However, judging by the fact that the secondary education is available online, it's a really good um, indicator that uh, the other two will be available online as well. I can probably get back to you about that for 2022 intake in a couple of weeks time, but I might just need some time to work through the details. Okay. Perfect. So yeah, if anyone, thank you. Thanks Kat again. Um, thanks to all our presenters. If anyone's got any questions, please pop them through the chat because I'm just gonna ask each of our presenters to um, very briefly, and I mean briefly, um, talk me through, Vivek, that's aimed at you, um, is talk me through what are your, in, in kind of one or two sentences, why should a, a student come to, to Adelaide, to South Australia? Um, Vivek, I'll start with you. Oh, it's quite liberal and homely. <laughs> Do you want me to go more? It's what, sorry, I didn't, sorry, I didn't hear you. <laughs> do you want me, do you want me, did you say two words or did you no, say- No, 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 just a couple of, a sentence or two. Ah, okay, yeah. Well, I find uh, Adelaide to be quite friendly. The community is wonderful. And uh, just coming back to your point that you raised before where a lot of Brits live, uh, I actually happen to live in a suburb where uh, majority of uh, uh the Brits used to live there. There's actually a South Australian government website where you can see the diversity of every suburb. I think oh, that yeah. would really help you if you just go and Google. So my suburb was predominantly dominated by the Brits. Uh, it's called Loch Lees, very close to the beach, as you, I'm sure, yeah. quite rightly guessed before. Mm -hmm. I find it quite nice, you know, homely. It's beautiful, livable, clean, safe. And uh, you got benefits of all the bigger cities you know in a, in a quite decent sized city and it's the best part is growing so you know Fantastic. so you've got really good opportunities if you if you're quite out, outgoing so Brilliant. thanks Vivek uh, Andrew over to you uh, I would say it's designed for life and I would also say um, it's, it's just opportunity at the moment I, I guess I, I've I'm actually born in Melbourne but I've lived in Adelaide for, for 20 plus years now so I'm a bit of a almost considered a local um, but <laughs> yeah, watching the city grow and the amount of opportunity that there is at the moment is is just fantastic to see brilliant and Kat over to you uh, yeah, the, the lifestyle here is it's we're so so lucky. You know, Stephen, you were saying before about being able to access these you know, major international concerts and like sporting events for really a fraction of the price of what you might be able to get them somewhere else. There is legitimately something for everybody here. You know, the festival states so music, dance, theatre, sport, drama, food, like everything is is here. Um, and we're so close to, I think, what makes Australia so iconic and so great, you know, um, SA is the, out, the gateway to the outback. So if you're into like the beach or forests or like red dirt or you know, anything, it's just, 
wild life. It's all it's all right here. So it's just the access, the immediate access to everything you want. Yeah. No, I mean, I've I've been to Adelaide a few times now, and you know, I completely agree with that. The fact that you can, you know, in any day you can pop up to the wineries, you can pop to the beach, you can, you know, you've got the amazing markets, the restaurants, the food is incredible, um, and it's all it doesn't feel to me like a massive city, um, which which is great. It's a, yeah, it's a, it's it's a great place to be. So I don't think we have any more questions. Have any any come through? No, I don't think they have. Um, so thank you again, presenters. Go off and, and have some dinner and a glass of wine or something. Um, and thank you, everyone, for, for listening now. And if you're listening online later, thank you. Um, we are available to you. Um, yeah, www.studyoptions.com. Um, feel free to ask us any questions that you may have. So thanks, everyone, for listening. Thanks to our presenters and hope to hear from you soon. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Stefan. Bye.